Question 18. On the following grid, triangle PQR is drawn. You can see it there. First question, part A. On the same grid, draw Roman 1, triangle P prime, Q prime, R prime, the image of triangle PQR, and a reflection in the line Y is equals to 0. It's good to note that Y is equals to 0 is the line X axis. This is the X axis. That is the equation of the X axis. So that is the first thing you're going to do. So we reflect these PQR under the line y is equals to zero the x axis so the x axis is going to act as the mirror line so to do that we know the property of reflection the object and the image should be equidistant from the line of reflection we start with q look at the distance between q and the x axis those are two squares so from this point here from two zero you count two squares one two so you have q prime there then look at r r to the line of flexion that is the x-axis how many squares one two three four so from the x-axis you count four squares one two three four it will be here so that will be r prime then p distance from p to the x-axis one two three four so four again and it should be perpendicular so from this one two three one two three four it should be here so this is a p prime then you join you join that so you join that is p prime q prime r prime so that is how you're supposed to do that another important thing to note i want you to look at the coordinates for example you can take one you can take uh, q the coordinates of q q is uh, two one then under the reflection in the x-axis is mapped on two two negative one this is a q prime two negative one notice that under reflection of any image the coordinate that is under the reflection in the line x-axis what changes is the y coordinate the y coordinate changes the sign the x coordinate remains constant doesn't change so that is what is happening across all the other p and r so that is part a part two Triangle P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime, the image of triangle P prime, Q prime, R prime, the one that we've just drawn. Under enlargement scale factor, negative 1.5, center O, the origin, so enlargement. So whatever we have drawn is enlarged through center origin, and the scale factor of enlargement is negative 1.5. So the first thing we do enlarging we join all the object point to the center of enlargement using a straight line so we start with p so join p the center of enlargement like that using a straight line then you go to q same to q then r like that so after joining take a pair of compass so after joining uh, all the object points this is p prime r prime and q prime to the center of enlargement now how do we go about negative 1.5 enlargement of negative 1.5 how do we count that take that distance that is uh, the distance you need to take p prime to the center of enlargement then with that measurement go to the center of enlargement which is the origin the center of enlargement so you need to that is if i mark an arc here that will be enlargement by one I made mistake there slight mistake so if i mark an arc there so if i mark an arc there that is enlargement by one so enlargement by 1.5 you take half of that distance take half of that distance and half of that distance is around there that is half of that distance then now from here I'll stand at that point and mark that so that will be 1.5 one and a half times another simpler method you can use just count the number of squares along that straight line from p prime the center of enlargement count the number of squares they are one two three four those are four squares so one and a half times so one and a half 1.5 times four squares this will give six squares that means from the center of enlargement 
you simply be required to count six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is where you shall have P prime. That is the easiest way. So now let's get R double prime. So this was uh, P double prime. You see you're counting six squares from the center of enlargement. So from the center of enlargement along that straight line of R, of R prime. So just count one, two, three, four, five, six. So it will be here. So this is where we shall have R double prime. Then for Q, for Q, follow that straight line from the center of enlargement. Count six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. To be here. That is uh, Q double prime. Then you join. So that is triangle P double prime, Q double prime. R double prime. So after doing that, we go to the next triangle. That is part three. Triangle P triple prime, Q triple prime, R triple prime. The image of triangle P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime under half turn about O, about the origin. So whatever we have drawn, now we need to rotate that in the half turn about the origin. So this one is quite simple. Because we just need to understand what is half turn. Half turn about the origin. Half turn is 180. So what half turn is 180 degrees. Either side, whether it is a negative half turn or positive half turn, it will not change anything. 180 degrees. That is a straight line. So we start with P. So for P, if you measure along that straight line, you need to extend this. So we'll have to extend this line. So let me extend it. I have to extend these lines here. So you extend those lines like that. Then 180 degrees uh, starting with uh, P double prime. So when you place a protractor. So when you place a protractor, the center marking the origin there. You can see. So 180 runs all the way from this point that is 180 all the way to this is a straight line so that is a 180 now to rotate that uh p double prime through 180 about the origin you just need to count the number of squares or take that distance from p double prime to the origin take that distance for me i'll just count the number of squares from P double prime to the center. Those are how many squares? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Along that straight line. Because uh, I've noted 180 will be that. That will be 180 for all of them. That is 180 degrees. So from the center of rotation, you count 6 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six so you'll notice uh, p triple prime will be located there so one two three four five six six squares so from the center of rotation to p double prime along that straight line six squares then from the center that is the origin to p, p triple prime six squares you do the same for all the others now let's go to r double prime to the center along that straight line so they are still one, two, three, four, five, six squares. So from the center, you count six squares again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it will be here. This, is, this will be R triple prime. Then for Q, along that straight line, there are still six squares from Q double prime to O. Count six. You can use either. You can take that distance using a pair of compass and transfer it or you can count the squares i'm counting the squares because my scanned graph is not that accurate enough to get the measurement the accurate distance so from the center of point o to q triple prime count one two three four five six so it will be here there is a q triple prime then you join let me recheck for r we check for one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. You can see for R, I have to correct for R. R is supposed to be here. I noted that. So from R double prime to the center, that is six squares. So from the center, count six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it will be here. R triple prime will be there. So join. And it like that. You have it. So there is 
P triple prime, R triple prime, Q triple prime is there. The last question, describe a single transformation that maps P prime, Q prime, R prime to P double prime, R triple prime, Q triple prime, R triple prime. So the two, these two, these two, which transformation maps this triangle to this? Can shade that. Uh, the transformation that will map that triangle I've shaded in yellow. And the one that would map it to this one. The next one. So those two. Those two I've shaded. So which transformation would map this triangle to this? When you just look at P prime, Q prime, and R prime. When you just look at these P prime, R prime, Q prime, and then you look at P double P triple prime. Q triple prime, R triple prime. You notice that is an enlargement. The triangle has been enlarged. And if it is an enlargement, because it is obvious it is enlargement, how do you describe an enlargement? By giving the center of enlargement and the scale factor of enlargement. To do that, you simply join any two object and image point using straight line. For example, you can decide to join Q prime to Q triple prime using a straight line extend it then choose another one p prime you can choose these we have p prime and p triple prime join that using a straight line as you can see and we've chosen this one join where those two lines are meeting when they're extended that becomes center that is the center of enlargement so the center of enlargement is the origin of point o then the scale factor how do you get the scale factor you can you can simply do it like this so to get the scale factor of enlargement, this is what you do. You can get it by scale factor is given by from the origin to the image point, which is P triple prime. Divide that one by from the origin from point O to P prime. So get that distance. So from the origin to P triple prime, get that distance. How many squares are they? One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are 6 squares divided by what about from O to P? So 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are 4. The 4 squares. Those are 4 squares. So when you divide that, you will simply get 6 divided by 4. You get 1.5. You get 1.5. So 1.5 is the scale factor of enlargement. So this is how you describe it. You say it is an enlargement center, center the origin and the scale factor of enlargement. We've got that one as 1.5. So that is how you're supposed to solve that question.